Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to all those visiting with us. We're happy to have you here. And everyone who is joining us in worship online, welcome. I want to thank you all for your prayers as I traveled to and from Liberia. Uh, Bishop Miller and I had a great time, uh, especially being able to worship with Reed Memorial Lutheran Church, our partner congregation. Um, and also just getting to know the Lutheran Church in Liberia more and all of the good work that they're doing there. So um, we have a Companion Synod Sunday coming up, and so I'm hoping to be able to share a little bit more about that with you then. You'll see in the front of your bulletin we have announcements, upcoming events. Today is Dime Sunday, and so if you'd like to donate any change, you can do that in the little buckets that are in the back of the sanctuary. This Saturday is the Mother-Daughter Banquet that begins at 6 p.m. here in the Social Hall. Uh, please be sure to sign up in the back if you have not already. Next Sunday is, or not next Sunday, but in a couple weeks is Graduate Recognition Sunday. Uh, we have um, some high school graduates that we'll be praying for and, and giving our best wishes to them as they start a new chapter in their life. Also coming up at the end of May, uh, we're going to participate in the Global Wave of Prayer again this year. That is a time between Ascension Day and Pentecost Sunday when we pray along with Christians around the world. We pray for people to come to know the love of Jesus. And um, it's a wonderful thing that's been growing for about 10 years now. Uh, and there will be prayer resources, there will be a devotional that will be available, and there will also be a prayer station that will be out at the pavilion in St. Peter's Groves. And so you can go there anytime, sunrise to sunset, and be able to pray there out in God's creation. We also have a Camp Mount Luther, Camp Mount Luther Spring Work Day coming up on the 20th. That begins at 8 p.m. Please let Betty Lou know if you would like to participate. And there will also be a lunch provided. Um, Trinity uh, sponsors one of the buildings down at Camp Mount Luther, and so we tend to clean that up right before the camp season starts. Chad also wanted me to let you know that they are still looking for staff. And so if you're interested in spending a summer with kids out in God's creation, um, you're more than welcome. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, I want to let people know that the restroom right here is not functioning right now, so if you do need to use the restroom, please just go through the double doors and turn left, and you'll find uh, multiple bathrooms there. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Yes. Oh yes, the the golf I'm not tournament. Excited, I'm not excited about playing. <laughs> You're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So the golf tournament is tomorrow. Yeah, I hope you have good weather for that then too. Yeah, great. Thank you. Any other announcements? All right. If not, please. Ooh. Yes. Mindy, you had a birthday. <laughs> You're shaking your head. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, well, on the count of three, we'll say happy birthday, Mindy, okay? One, two, three. Happy birthday, Mindy. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, please rise as you are able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has risen waiting for us to take notice. Christ has risen, moving us to respond. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Acts, the seventh chapter. <clears throat> Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. We'll read the psalm responsively. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My heart is in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies, and from those who hurt against me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love.
The second lesson is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. All the children are invited forward for a children's message. And the youth. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Good. Good morning. All right. So, how's everybody doing today? Good? Still waking up a little bit? So today we're going to hear in our gospel reading, we're going to hear um, Jesus talking to his disciples. And this is, um, we're going back in the story a little bit. Uh, this is when Jesus shares a meal of Holy Communion with his friends, the disciples, and he washes their feet, and he's talking with them because he's about to leave, uh, and he's about to go to the cross, um, and a lot of things are going to happen that are going to be pretty scary for the disciples. And, and Philip asks to Jesus to show him the Father, to show him God. And Jesus says, you, you have seen him. You've been with me all this time, and I've shown you God. And so I have a picture here, and this is a picture of some of my family. And um, I sort of look a little bit like my, my mom and my dad and my grandmother. Are there any ways that you look like some of your family members? Do you have any features that look like your family? Your parents? Yeah? Yeah, my eyes, my eyes are the same as my mom and my grandma's. We both have, we all have hazel eyes. And I've got my, well, my hair is typically brown, but I'm now dyeing it red. But there's all these ways that we look like our family. And so we talk about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God, the Father, as this trinity, as this family that now we're a part of through the waters of holy baptism. But there are other ways that we can look like our family members, or we can look like Jesus being part of Jesus's family. What are some ways that you can, you can see Jesus today? What are some ways that you can see Jesus? Are there things that you can, you can do to show Jesus? Yeah? You can pray? Yeah, absolutely. Jesus does a lot of praying. Yeah? Anything else you can do to show Jesus? I like to go in to help my neighbors, if I can help, you know, we talk about the Tiger Treats program. That's a way that we show people Jesus by helping feed those who can't get the food that they need. There's all these good ways, these good ways to show Jesus' love, and that's a way that we can help people to see God the Father, help people to see a glimmer of Jesus' love in us, that people can see Jesus in you. Because that's what we get in the waters of baptism. Jesus, we receive Jesus, the gift of Jesus' love and forgiveness and life. 
So I want you to listen in and hear what Jesus has to say to his disciples today in our gospel reading. But will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you so much for Jesus, and we thank you for the ways that we see Jesus in each other. Help us to show Jesus, to show Jesus' love and forgiveness and mercy to those we meet this week, every day, and throughout our lives. We pray this all in your holy name. We love you. We, we praise you. Amen. I just forgot my own prayer at the end. Oh, my goodness. What is it? We love you, right, and we praise you. It was the inflection. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for coming up. The Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I wonder how many times I've read and spoken those words. And I'm sure you've read and heard these words countless times. They are familiar. And they can be words of reassurance in difficult times. I love the encouragement and the hope and the promise that stand behind these words, and I never tire of hearing them. What troubles your heart today? What does it feel like to have a troubled heart? We all experience it in our own ways, but see if any of this sounds familiar. 
Sometimes it can feel isolating, like you're paralyzed, overwhelmed, anxious, powerless, off balance, out of control, disconnected, afraid, despairing, grief, frustration, anger. Do you recognize any of those in yourself in this moment? Spoken or unspoken, I think there's a question every troubled heart is asking. Will the foundation that I hold on to, the center that I hold on to, is it collapsing around me? That tends to be my question when my heart is troubled. And Jesus' answer is, do not let your hearts be troubled. And as much as I like those words, I wish he would have put, uh, been a little bit more specific, but Jesus was never much for questions and answers. The disciples would ask, what's going to happen? Jesus responds, do not let your hearts be troubled. How will we get through this? Do not let your hearts be troubled. When will it be over? Do not let your hearts be troubled. What will life, the world, be like? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Is everything going to be okay? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus is telling us to not lose our center in the midst of all that is going on that is troubling us. That's what happens when our hearts are troubled and we don't know the way. We lose our center. We start living outside of ourselves, and when we do, life is defined by and focused on all of these external things that we really don't have any control over. So Jesus is calling us back to our center, back to himself, to recenter and rebalance. He's inviting us to live from Jesus' love outward. Jesus knows what it's like to be troubled. There were times that Jesus' heart was troubled. He was deeply moved and troubled when he saw Mary weeping at the death of Lazarus, and then Jesus wept also. Now my soul is troubled, he said, as he faced his own death. And John says that Jesus was troubled in spirit when he told the disciples that he would be betrayed. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is that not the cry of every troubled heart? And I wonder if Jesus' heart was troubled even as he was telling the disciples to not let their hearts be troubled. Why wouldn't it be? It's the night of the Last Supper. His, the feet of the disciples had been washed, and Judas is about to get up and leave the table. And I wonder if Jesus was talking to himself as much as to the disciples. I wonder if he was reminding himself as, as, as much as them that the Father's house is a sanctuary and a home for troubled hearts and that there are many dwelling places in the Father's house as there are troubled hearts. What if today's gospel is a story about finding and recovering our center in Jesus? What if recentering is the front door of the Father's house for Jesus, for the disciples, and for us? And what if we sometimes have to lose our center so we can find a newer, truer one. Isn't that really the Easter story that we tell and celebrate every year? Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus rose to new life. And that seems to be a universal pattern of life. Life and death, new life. Order, disorder, reorder, centering, recentering. Every resurrection, every reordering, and every recentering opens us to new life and keeps us, keeps the present moment from closing in on us. 
And that's the promise of Easter today and every day. That's the promise of Easter in the midst of whatever troubles your hearts. And that's why Jesus can say to himself and to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. So if your heart is troubled, then it's probably time to recenter. And recentering begins by looking within and seeing the ways in which we are living a life that is outside of Christ. Now, recentering on Christ won't eliminate all of our problems. It won't take away our worries or, or fix everything. Recentering gives us a place of stability on which to stand. It tethers our heart to faith, hope, and love. Recentering means loving our neighbors and ourselves valuing the needs, hopes, and concerns of others as much as our own, being gentle with ourselves and others, and forgiving, not seven times, but 70 times seven, whether it's ourselves or one another. Recentering helps us to know what to hold on to and what to let go of. And recentering on Christ connects us to the abundant life that we share. It opens our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to the way, the truth, and the life. And it especially reminds us that we are not the center, that the center lies in Christ Jesus. Our hearts are troubled and the world seems to be spinning out of control, but there is still a point at the center, still a point that is not spinning crazily, still a point of peace, still a point of stability. God is the still point at the center. In what ways are you living off-center? In what you do today? In what needs recentering? What does it look like for you today? What is just one thing that you can change or do today that will help bring you back to the center of Jesus Christ, to help in our troubled hearts? Let us pray. Gracious God, you know what weighs on our hearts and minds. Call us back to you. Help us to center our lives on you. To remember your promises of love and forgiveness, grace and mercy. Help us to be centered on you. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen.
Please join me in saying the words of our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel, even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for our diaconal ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between church and world. Hear us, O God. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O God. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Bring peace in Sudan, Ukraine, and all other countries experiencing war and violence. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick, especially Dale, Beth, Lucille, Jim, Michelle, Barry, Joanne, Wilbur, and all others we now name. Hear us, O oh God. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your ways. Hear us, O oh God. Yes. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace however you feel comfortable.
let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and Stephen and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ broken and poured out for you. Amen. Please be seated.
Please rise as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Please receive the blessing. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.